Hi, welcome to the latest video. Well, this is going to be another entry in my series on virtualization using VMware ESXi, actually version 7, that I already have loaded on my test bench sitting right over here. I'm going to install Windows 11 in this episode. Now, Windows 11 has a couple of tricks to it, and just Installing Windows in general has a couple of things you have to be aware of, so I'm going to make sure I cover all of that as I'm showing you how to install it. The biggest trick that you have to be aware of is it doesn't recognize that there is a CPU-based TPM or a firmware-based TPM on this particular system that I have, even though it's 8th generation Intel, definitely has it built on, and if I run uh, Windows 10 or 11, as a separate standalone operating system, it works just fine. It, it installs just fine. But for this one, we're going to have to make what I would refer to, to be honest with you, as a hack, sort of a back door into uh, the Windows 11 operating system that obviously was put in there by Windows so that they could quickly do some testing of it and different machines of different types and get past the idea that it was looking for that little TPM module, whether it's a separate standalone module or the one that's firmware based and actually uses part of the CPU. So anyway, I'll show you how to put this little hack in and uh, we'll see how it works. And then I'll show you some other little configuration things that have to go along with this. So let's get started. To install Windows on any system, whether it's a fixed system or a virtual machine system like ESXi, the first thing to do is get the actual ISO file, which represents the base operating system. If you go to this site here, which I'll put in a link below, microsoft.com, software-download, you will see where you can get everything from Windows 7 through Windows 11, all the released versions of it. So let's say, let's get Windows 11. Now, as you can see here, we have a version that, uh, I guess it's the last download version. It doesn't actually have a subversion to it, but this is, since we came to this site, this has to be the, the latest version of it. Now, you get to create an installation assistant, which we're not going to install it on this computer, or create an 11 installation media, or the last one, a Windows 11 disk image, which is what we want. So let's say we want to click this. We've got to pick Windows 11 multi-edition, and then we're going to want to say, you can read that little note here if you want before you download it, but we want to download, and the first thing it's asking us is pick our language. So I'm going to pick English. It happens to be the language the country I'm in, the United States. I'm going to confirm that. I want the 64-bit download, so I'm going to click up here. And now, as you can see, up in the right-hand corner here, it is actually downloading. This is going to take a while to actually download onto this system into this browser's download directory. Once it's there, I will put it in a safe location, and then I will have it available to upload for purposes of creating a virtual machine from it. Okay, I'm inside of the actual ESXi management screen. So I'm logged into it remotely from the PC I'm doing this video on. And as you can see from this, I have a Windows 10 virtual machine already installed. I did that during my live stream not too long ago. So let's see if we can get that actual ISO file over here. Now I have two storage locations. One is an SSD. This one is the hard drive that I have, a 500 gig hard drive, Western Digital. This one here is the actual one where I actually store the created virtual machines, and that's on the SSD. That's a 480 gigabyte SSD. So the first thing we have to do is upload the image to this particular storage location, this VM store location that I've created. So I click on Data Browser. I want to go into the ISO files. Right now, all I have out there is the Windows ISO, which is the Windows 10. The name is a little misleading on that. It should say 10, but it didn't. So let's go ahead and upload the new one. The new one I have loaded over in my area where I store these things. And right here I have Windows 11 English. This is the one that we downloaded a few seconds ago. So I'm going to now upload it to that data store within ESXi. So I'll do an open. It's fast here, so let me just do a refresh and see if it's there, and it is there. So it's already completed, and I have the new Windows 11 ISO file out there. Both of these are ISO files, right? Let's close this. Now let's create the new virtual machine. So if I go into virtual machines here on the left-hand side, I can say create a VM. 
And then this screen is opened up, which allows us to actually create the VM on this ESXi VMware machine. So the first thing it wants is, do I want to create a new virtual machine? Or do I want to display? Or do I want to register an existing virtual machine? Let's say I transferred that over from another instance of ESXi. Well, that's not the case here. I want to create a new one. So I'll click on that and I'll hit next. Now I have to give it a name. So what I'm going to call it is Win11. And I'm just going to say A, in case I make a B, C, D, whatever. I also have to though select what is its OS family. It happens to be in the family of Windows, and I have to create the version of it. Now this does not have the Windows 11 yet. Maybe in a future version of ESXi it will. It has Windows 7, Windows 8, all sorts of things. Windows Server 2003, and on and on. There's a whole bunch to choose from. The closest one to what I'm doing happens to be Windows 10 64-bit. So that's what I'll select. I am not enabling this option here. That's a special case one you can read about by clicking on that little information tab. But we'll just proceed. Next, it's going to put it in the data store one, which is my SSD. And that's exactly where I want it. I don't want to put it in the VM store, which is where I put the ISO files. So I'll just go ahead and hit next. Now I've got to set the options for this particular virtual machine. If you click on any one of these, you get further sub options to them. So under CPU, you got number of CPUs, you got number of cores per socket. I'm going to take those defaults on it since Windows 10 is what that defaulted to, and that's usually pretty close. I can reserve certain amounts of frequency associated with it. I'm not going to do any reservations. I will, for this particular one, I will take the defaults. And now the next one I want is memory. Now it's going to start off with four gig of memory. That's good, but I want to reserve another four. So I'm going to select reservation of eight gig total of memory. So that's all I have to change on this one. Under hard disk, well, 48 is not enough for Windows 11. So I'm going to bump that up to 64. I also want to go to thin provisioning. If this was a VM that I'd be running full time for a uh, purposes of something that is critical to me, I would use thick provisioning, but it's going to take a long time to actually format that, which you know I'd rather not do right now. All the rest I can take the, the default options. But what I don't have is I need to attach the ISO file to this CD DVD drive. And I do that by clicking here and then clicking a data ISO file. So now it wants to know how to get to it. And as I said before, I put those all in this storage area called VM store and under ISO files, and here it is. So that's the one that it'll do, Windows 11 English, and I'll select that, and as you can see, we're all connected to this ISO file at this point. The video card, I won't play with that now, but a future one that I use for doing my rendering, I may, for a Windows 11 when I'm using that to render my videos. But now let me go back up, and I want to pick VM options. Let's look at boot options. Now it's defaulting to EFI. Now that's critical for Windows 11. It has to have EFI BIOS. You do have an option of going to a regular default older generation BIOS, which would work fine with Windows 10, but it won't work with Windows 11. But what I do have to do, and this is something that I'll show as I get to configure the Windows 11, I have to give it a nice long delay. And this is milliseconds, so I'm going to put 10,000 milliseconds. A millisecond is one thousandth of a second. So this will be a 10 second boot delay. Now I could turn this off later once we've installed it, but for purposes of installing it, I need to have this delay. That takes care of what we have to do here. I don't want that I accidentally checked it. And I'll hit next. Now it's giving me a summary page of all the things that it will do. And then you should go through this and make sure that it's everything that you selected. In my particular case, it looks like it is. It's got the right ISO file here. It doesn't have the secondary screen where I put in the VM options. These are the basic options for creating it, however. So now I will say finish. And now, as you can see, we have Windows 11A as a new virtual machine. The next step will be to bring it up and start configuring it properly. But to bring it up is the first trick that I have to show you. Okay, let's see if we can get this image started. So we can get ready to install on it. I'm going to start it up, but you remember I had a 10 second delay before it actually starts. And I did it intentionally so that I can inject an escape key to a prompt that comes up as soon as you boot up for the first time from the installation media, which is effectively what we're doing here. So hopefully I'm able to get it done within the 10 seconds. If not, I'll have to try it again. So what I'll do is I'll hit start and then I'll come over here to actions. I'm going to go to guest OS. I'm going to go to send keys and I'm going to hit escape. And it worked. So right now we were able to hit the 
key, the keyboard would not have worked. This is the only way you could inject the response to that, which is why I put the 10 second delay. So now we can start installing it, but I'm gonna stop the install early on. So let's go, accept that. I'm gonna say install now. I'm gonna say I don't have a product key. Now, before I do this part, I'm gonna have to modify the registry of the in-memory image of this particular installation. Now what I could do is hit next at this point. It'll get the error saying it cannot load Windows 11 on this PC because it won't see the TPM. It can't see it through the ESXi operating system, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out of this right now. So I come in here and I hit Shift F10. I break into a command prompt on this image that's running in memory. Now I'm going to make some changes to the registry. So in order to do that, I've got to run the reg edit. Usually a very dangerous thing to do, but we're just making a temporary change here just so we can get past the error that <laughs> is about to happen. Hit enter. Now once I'm in here, I've got to negotiate down to this one, H key local machine. And once I'm in H key local machine, I then go to system. And when I'm on system, I have to right click on the setup. So this one down here that says setup, I got to right click on that. And I am going to say new key and I got to give it a name. And the name that I have to give this key is called lab config and it has to be spelled exactly that way with the particular letters capitalized as they are. So now we got that key cre created. Currently there's only one key that automatically defaulted to it, but I'm going to right click in this white field and I'm going to say new D word 32 bit. And I've got to give this guy the label that says bypass TPM check and it has to be spelled exactly that way with the lead characters for each word and in the case of TPM the entire acronym capitalized. Now it's currently set to zero so what I have to do is I have to double click on this you can see it's zero here I'm going to change it to a one and I'm going to say okay. So now we have a one set into that new key that we created. I can now exit out of this because it saves it in memory and if I exit out of this I should be able to proceed. So let's see what happens here. And there we go. We would not have seen this screen if that did not work. Now for purposes of understanding where this came from, it actually came from uh, Microsoft the development team originally. There's an article written from a, called Ivo Behrens, and I've put the link down to it in the notes below. So you'll be able to see the actual article that I drew this all from. And it's very popular. And as I said earlier, this is what you would have to do no matter where you were trying to install Windows 11, and the machine did not have either physically a TPM or a firmware TPM or an extra layer of operating system, in this case ESXi, that this particular machine has. So let's proceed. I'm gonna do an accept and then I'll do next. I always do custom install and I recommend that. And now the whole 64 gigabytes of space that I had allocated for the, the image disk for this VM is available and I'm just gonna click next. And it's now installing Windows 11 onto this particular PC. So we just have to wait a few minutes. Okay, just continuing with the prompts. It's US, yes. I don't want to add a second keyboard. Okay, I'll call it a name similar to what I gave it before. Win 11A. Okay, I want to set it up for personal use. Now I don't want to sign into the Microsoft account. So what I'll do here, and I don't want to create one, I don't have a security key. I'm going to go to sign in options. And one of the options, which I will choose, is called the offline account. This is because I picked Windows Pro, Windows 11 Pro. If I had picked Windows 11 Home, it would have forced me to use the Microsoft account. I'll skip this for now. It wants to know who is going to use it. And I'll just give it my normal root login. I've got to answer the three prompts. And I should be creating that account as an administrator account. And I'm going to say no to all of this stuff. And we'll accept that. And there we go. Windows 11 is up. But we're not done. We got one more thing to do. For example, let me demonstrate something. If I try to take this window and I try to grow it, it really does not grow in either one of the dimensions. It needs special drivers added, along with some special services too, to make it work properly. 
as an image, a VM image running in VMware. Now to do that, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to do a shutdown under action. I'll say, for, I'll just do it normally here. I'll come in here, go into the normal shutdown right here for Windows 11, and I'll do a normal shutdown. Okay, it is now shut down. Now you see this blue warning here, VMware tools are not installed. There's a special set of tools that have to now be installed within Windows 11 itself. The same thing for just about any image. Most images that are available to be created as VMs in uh, VMware have to have those tools added. So what I'm going to do is here are the tools right over here. I'm going to say actions guest OS, I'm going to say install VMware tools. It will install a program that has to then be installed when I boot it up next. I'll show you. So now it's modified the VM is what it actually has done. So now if I start it again, it's actually starting up. I just have to click on it to get it big. So it's already starting after I did that. So it's modified it and now we gotta do a login to this as root. So you really shouldn't create many more accounts on this until you get the VMware tools installed. But let's log in. And we're up. Now, it's pending and installed. Now, sometimes it'll prompt you right off the bat with the auto start. Sometimes it won't. What I do is I'll open up this little file explorer. And look what it's done. It's added a VMware itself within a VMware. And it's called VMware Tools. And it looks like a DVD drive. So I will click on that. And then I will hit Setup. Now, these tools do a lot of things. It allows for proper shutdowns of the VMs. If you shut down the entire uh, VMware ESXi, it allows for proper restart of it. It allows for a lot of different things that uh, are critical for the proper use of uh, a VMware. I did double click on that. I guess I didn't. I want to install it. And it's just like installing any other program into your system. I'm going to do a complete though. I'm going to say do a complete install. It also puts the proper drivers for the network, for the video, and so forth. It does a lot of different services. I'll put the link down below to the actual user manual for the VM tools, so you can actually get a view of what it does and, and basically how it functions. Okay, they are now installed. It says I must restart, so I will say go ahead and restart. There we go. So now I could resize this any way I want. It's obedient to the resizing because the drivers are proper for VMware. And of course, you know, log in and make sure you get the latest security patches installed. I won't go through that in this video. I think at this point I've covered what I need to cover and hopefully you got something out of it and I'll see you next time.